My name is Anders Arviken. I'm a vice president at uh, Valor Securities. Um, we're going to present uh, Sensogen, and uh, we quite recently um, announced a uh, directed share, share issue. Uh, and we had uh, some of the lead investors were uh, the Swedish Fourth uh, National Mutual Fund. We had uh, Consensus, Cavalier, uh, Thomas Lawson, and Ålands Banken, among others. Uh, we are also uh, carrying out a rights issue at the moment, and uh, Axel will tell you more about that. But he will also tell you what's interesting and how he will uh, basically transform the company from a uh, uh, development company into a commercial selling company. So with that, we have 20 minutes. Yeah, Thank you very much, Anders, and I'm very happy to see all of you in this room. It's extremely crowded. It's almost when I used to play team handball many years ago. Um, since uh, June uh, this year, I am the managing director of uh, Sian Sajen. And uh, my mission, as you see on this screen, is to move this company from a research company into a profitable commercial organization. Uh, just some history first. Sian Sajen was founded uh, by uh, professors Carl uh, Borebeck and Malin Lindstedt in Lund in 2010. We still ha have our headquarters in Lund. We also have a sales uh, uh, company set up uh, in the United States. And as you know, we're listed on NASDAQ First North uh, since 2017. So what is it we do? Uh, we have uh, developed and invented a test that we also perform and sell that can assess chemicals' abilities to cause allergic reactions. And this test is animal-free. So our aim is to replace the animal testing that goes on within the areas of skin and respiratory sensitization testing. So far, we have the highest predicted performance of assays currently on the market. We are above 90%. And uh, as you already understand, from a position point of view, we are right now starting the commercialization phase. And we are aiming at break even in 2022. And to do that, uh, I was happy to actually set a new commercial management in place a couple of weeks ago that is helping me to run this journey. Today I will talk to you about our technology, uh, the Guard platform. I will also talk about the market, I will talk about our product portfolio, and I will talk about our strategy going forward. Uh, so, just for those of you who are not familiar with our technology, we use genomics to replace animal testing with high technology. On the left side of this slide you see the mouse. And that is ultimately what we are replacing. Uh, animal tests today have an accuracy of approximately 70 to 75 percent. What Sensayen did was to go through the human genome, more than 29,000 genes, and by doing that, identifying the couple of hundred genes that actually react when they are exposed to substances. And on those genes, we used machine learning and algorithms to define uh, pattern recognition so that it was possible for us to actually see if a substance will cause an allergy or not. And we do not only do that better than uh, the mouses, but we do it faster, and we have reached an accuracy of 90 to 95 percent. So genomics in combination with machine learning and pattern recognition is the new technology that we are bringing into this uh, market. If we compare to the existing methods that are out there today, the validated ones, you can see on the bottom of this uh, 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 graph the LLNA, uh, which is actually the animal testing, where we beat the mouse, as you saw on the other uh, slide, uh, from an accur accuracy point of view. Then you see three tests that are also in vitro tests like ours, DPRA, HCLAT and Keratinosense. But as you can see on the slide, also here, our accuracy is much higher. And the accuracy is higher because we use many more biomarkers than they do in their tests. Then, if we also compare to the other in vitro tests, we have the only test that can also identify the potency. And that is actually how much of a substance that is needed if the al allergic reaction shall start. And that can only be done in animal tests. So that really differentiates us from the other uh, validated tests today. Uh, the market we act in is uh, fast growing, quite young, but fast growing, and that is the in vitro toxicology test market. 
Uh, around 2016, it was uh, estimated to have a value of approximately 129 billion sec. And after that, we see an opportunity for us to address around 5 billion sec. And as you can see on this slide, this market is growing fast and is expected to double uh, until 2022. Uh, on our board, we have one of the persons in the world that knows most about animal testing. His name is Ian Kimber, and he's a professor. When he found out about Senseian many years ago, he said, this is the future. I want to join your company. I want to be on your board. And together with Ian and his peers, we actually uh, developed this picture to explain a little bit better the potential that we actually see. On the left side, you see that every year, one million mice are used uh, for skin, uh, skin sensitization testing. And it's approximately 18 to 20 mice per test. So that gives us an opportunity of addressing approximately 50,000 tests per year. And that is what you can see. Uh, sorry. That is what you can see right here. And here we address that potential with God Skin and God Skin medical device. On the right side, you see that we have also uh, presented the guard air opportunity and that information also comes from Ian Kimber and his uh, peers and they say that this market has a potential that is at least on the same size as the one on the left and this one I have not uh, actually used in my break-even analysis so this is something that is, that is on top of the case that uh, we are presenting right now and on the top you can see an estimation of what it takes for us to, to reach break-even if we compare to the uh, cost uh, base we had in uh, 2018, it would take approximately 800 tests for us to reach break even. So it's not that many tests actually that are necessary for us to go into this, uh, to hit the target that we have set. Uh, because of that and the regulatory uh, changes that are going on in the market, we feel that our offer can really be a game changer. And if you look at the regulatory landscape today, you can see that there are some areas, the ones that are here in black, where there is already an animal ban in place, and that is for the, uh, the area of cosmetics. So that is the EU, it is Brazil, it is India, and it is Australia. Then you see that there are some areas in brown where prohibitions are considered, Canada, the US, Southeast Asia, and already today, there are places or areas in the US like California where they are actually uh, banning animal tests. And then finally, there are also regions where there are guidelines to use alternatives, but where they have not at all taken the step yet to ban uh, the animal testing. So with this as a base and some other trends that we see in the market, we feel that there are lots of things that are really helping Sensayen in its uh, uh, move forward. First of all, the animal testing ban, and that you can also see if you look at the different authorities, web pages and so on, there is a will to get away from the animal testing. It will not be possible to avoid it completely, that's not what I'm saying, but there is a clear will to get away from the animal testing. Secondly, there are, from many of the uh, stakeholders out there, a need for improved test results, higher accuracy and faster turnaround times, and also here we can support that process. There is also a need for driving costs down, and that can be seen, for example, in the medical technology uh, industry and the pharmaceutical industry. If it is possible to identify a substance very early in the product development process, that can reduce costs enormously when you move forward with, you, with your product development programs. And here we can help those companies to ac actually exclude substances early. And then the final trend is of of course, what we see in Sweden and on many other markets, uh, a public op opinion that is really in favor of re reducing animal tests or actually stopping them totally or at least uh, helping in the face of reducing them to, to, to a maximum. And that, of course, has also affected a lot of the companies since long that in their CSR work really also have, have a target to reduce the number of animal tests. Uh, the industries that uh, Sensorian has chosen to address 
I was very happy about uh, to see when I joined the company. It is uh, for industries where there is a huge need of this type of testing. It is the cosmetics industry, the chemicals industry, the pharmaceutical industry and the medical devices uh, industry. And for those industries, Sensagen has developed different tests. And um, here I was also happy to see that the company has actually met one of the targets it set uh, before I started. And that was to launch one new uh, offer uh, every year. And that has been done since 2017. In 2017, Sensagen launched the Guard Skin and the Guard Potency. In 2018, Guard Air to address uh, respiratory uh, allergies. And then I was actually happy to be able to join the launch of the Guard Skin medical device at Eurotox in Finland in September this year. And uh, the message from me to the organization and to those of you who are interested in following Sensagen in the coming years is that now we focus on selling what we have. There is more in the pipeline, a lot of interesting research, but right now the message to the organization is that now we shall really commercialize these four tests that we have launched uh, to the market already. Uh, when it comes to the Guard Skin medical device, I want to elaborate on that a little bit more. A little bit later in the presentation, I will talk about the OECD validation that is important for Sensagen. But when, it, when we address the medical device segment, the OECD va validation is not in play. And in this segment, we address companies that really want to uh, run these types of tests in the product uh, development phase. And right now, there is a large need of expertise and support in this area because both the ISO regulations are getting tougher and the medical device regulation is increasing uh, the demand on these types of companies to run tests on the products. So this is a good opportunity for uh, Sensagen. And here our goal is to have our method included in the new and updated ISO standard. And we are already in the appendix uh, today. So look at what I've said so far as sort of an ASIS uh, description of the situation and uh, what we will then do going forward. We talked about uh, the issues right now and of course it was important for me to raise capital very early so that I could set the whole company in motion afterwards. So as you know now, we aim at break even in 2022 and we also aim at begum becoming the new global golden standard for in vitro sensitization testing. We will not be the global standard until we have the OECD validation. That is clear, but there is a work to do in preparation for that. So my priorities right now with the organization is first to implement the commercial organization in the market. Second, it is to increase the general guard platform awareness. We still have a lot to do when it comes to participating in conferences uh, and, and different meetings around the world to talk about this technology. Thirdly, it is to sell the products that we have launched today, as I told you before. Number four is to increase our presence in the geographical areas where we really want to be the coming years, and that is the uh, EU and the United States. And we will do that by direct sales and by adding more distributors and contract research organizations to our network. And if the team is able to deliver on those four, we have also said that since we also are a research organization, we will spend some time on the pipeline for the future. We will, of course, not stop the research, not at all. But right now, the main focus is on selling what we have. And all of this we do because, as many of you know, there is a pending uh, OECD validation where we expect to get the next uh, piece of information in 2020. And what we want to do is to prepare the markets as much as we can before we get that validation. So when we have it, the market shall be ready for the CROs to, to really... Uh, address. So what can we do then before we have the OECD validation? We have worked quite hard now with analyzing the regulatory landscape in the different regions. And first of all, we cannot be all over the world. So as you see in the top of this slide, we have decided to address the EU and the United States first of all. And at the top of the slide, you see the different segments, market segments, the industries <laughs> that we are in. I have split the chemicals into chemicals and agrochemicals, but otherwise you recognize cosmetics, pharma and medical device. And in those four, 
or five, the way, uh, depending on the way we look at it, we can actually work with the end customers in the product development phase that I have talked about before, and also when there is a need for a pre-registration or where they need another test method to have as weight of evidence. So this is the work that we are doing right now. And I can say that it's been quite interesting for me actually to participate in these types of calls myself, calling companies like Trelleborg in Sweden, the Lundbeck Pharma in Denmark and so on, and to see that when you start to talk to these types of companies, they are immediately interested and invite us to meetings. I have also, uh, the last 10 days, uh, traveled in the US, where I've met both suppliers, CROs and customers. And when we start to have these discussions with them about the potential of the test and how it can help them to reduce cost, it's great to see the interest uh, that they have. So this is before the OECD validation. Then, when we have the OECD validation, you see that then the cosmetics and chemicals market open up in a different way because then we become a recommended test method. And that means that all the CROs will use our method. And that, of course, is the time when we can start to talk about becoming an industry standard. So, the business model that we will use is one that I'm very familiar with from the time I had with BioGaia. And that means working through distributors to reach the market so that we can get an exponential effect on the resources that we invest ourselves. So the aim, long term, is that 80% of the business shall come from contract laboratories that are actually have a license to our tests. And then another 10% from distributors, which means that they are recommending us that we do the tests in our own laboratory, and then 10% direct sales. But we are not at all there today. Today, 90% of the sales are direct sales from our organization, where we run the tests in our own laboratory. But this is, this is what we are trying to build towards. Today, we have nine CRO partnerships, contract research organization partnerships uh, around the world. And two of them, Charles River and Eurofins, are among the top five in the world. In addition to these, we have another nine discussions ongoing with uh, other CROs. And one of the aims I have is to be able to communicate to you going forward that we add new CROs to our network. We also have direct customers today, and we are very happy that those customers are actually recurring customers. So when they have started to use our tests, they come back to us again. An important customer here is Coda, actually using our tests as part of the REACH registration, which is also a good, uh, a good quality stamp for us and for what we do. We can offer them more than what they have today. So how shall we reach the break-even? How will the sales be split? The way I built the case together with the organization is really looking at where we have the sales today and where we see the interest. And then it becomes evident that the largest part will come from the chemical uh, segment. And then there is an even split between cosmetics, pharma and medical devices. Maybe with a little question mark around medical devices, because the feedback I have received now the last weeks after the launch of the medical device test platform can actually uh, mean that that will move a little bit faster than I thought uh, uh, a couple of months ago. From a geographic point of view, 85% of the sales will come from the EU and the US. And what you see on the top, the 15% from Asia, will more likely come closer to 2022 than today. The team that will help me to do this, I'm very happy about. It is a strong commercial team where the VP sales is actually Peter Nelstedt, whom I had a very I would say positive competition with when he was running Proby and I was running BioGaia. We see the, that we can build sales organizations. We have the same idea of how to build sales organizations. Peter is supported by Anna Shorvi Hansson, who has a, her main task to recruit new uh, CROs uh, and to build that network for us. And then Tina Dakemark Laveson, who is actually used to running exactly the type of marketing that we need today. She did that, for example, in Cella Vision, when Cella Vision was where we are today, uh, many years ago. So, the strategy is set. We are working with the activities, and left to do now is, of course, the hard work to deliver on what we have said. So, um, thank you very much for uh, listening. <laughs>